And I always say there's three people who can help you. You need someone to look back, someone to look up, and somebody to look forward. The looking back, often for many people, has therapy and some other things, and that's not perfect, but just you got to look where you came from and how does that impact you. The looking up is more kind of like the big picture, whether it's spiritual for you, religious, I don't care, but like, why are you here on this earth? What are you here to do? Like the big stuff. And then the coaching is kind of like that pushing forward, that kick in the butt of like, I need to move forward. And your head trash, by the way, is in the dead center of those three. Because it's holding you back, you're missing the big picture, and it's from your past. So which person do you need to help you with it? I have no clue. The one you want to work with is not the one you need. If you like looking back, you need somebody to look forward. If you like looking forward, you need somebody to look back. And you also need people that you trust enough to lean into your life and say, Bree, you're not 18 anymore and you can do math. Yeah, that person to call you on your bullshit. I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. <laughs> it's true. Welcome to the Child Free Wealth Podcast, hosted by Bree and Dr. J, certified financial planner. Here we discuss life and finances as it relates to being child free. This podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please consult your advisor before implementing any ideas heard on this podcast. Hey, Child Free Wealth listeners, we are going to break into Bree's head, I mean, um, and mine, and others, and we're going to talk about head trash, which is all that stuff that is standing in your own way of achieving, of doing well, of making changes, of whatever it is. And we're going to pick apart kind of how to look at yours, how to identify what it is, where it comes from, all, all of that. And part of that is money mindsets, but part of it is also life mindsets and just the things we've been telling ourselves for way too long that are getting in our way. Bree, what's your thought on head trash? It is a painful topic to explore, but it is also necessary. Yeah. And, and let me just define it for a second here. You have stories that you've been telling yourself forever. We all do. And some of those stories are real. Some are fake. You know, we did an episode on money guilt and talked a little about stories and mindsets and mental models. But often these are things that are just stopping us from changing. So let me give you an example of this. I work with a lot of people. One of our top episodes is uh, I'll make you quit your job. And they're like, well, I can't quit my job. And I'm like, why? Well, because I make $100,000 or whatever it is. Okay, what does that have to do with anything? And they're like, well, I've worked so hard to get to here. I must keep going. Or you can stop. What happens is that head trash says, nope, I need to keep going up the corporate ladder. I need to keep doing this. This is what I was trained for. This is what I went to school for. This is what I've been trying to do. This was my goal. I'm like, cool, you hit it. Now what? Yeah, that is very true. We've had many of those conversations with people. Now what is always a difficult question. Let me give you an example. I'm going to pick into brain, Bree's brain for a second. And uh, we have a lot of these conversations offline. And you just get to hear them now in the podcast when they come back. And Bree was uh, starting off on her tour here to be a CFP and start working on the 65 and struggling a little bit with the tests. Is that fair, Bree? I, yeah, I was very much like, it wasn't the actual answering the questions that was hard. It was, I was getting very nervous that I wasn't going to do well and really struggling there. And in particular around math stuff, which by the way, mm -hmm. finance and math, we do math. Okay. Like it just kind of part of what we do. Um, it's not advanced math. I mean, let's be real on this. Our math is actually pretty simple because a computer or Excel does most of it for us. Mm -hmm. But you were struggling. What was the head trash holding you back? Yeah, this really gutted me. Even you had asked it to me before I even started too, but you said, whose voice is in your head? And that sucked. And it's my math teacher, honors pre-calculus teacher from my senior year of high school. I did not do well on an exam and I was really struggling. There was a lot of other things going on with my life. I was severely depressed at the time and asked for help. And she told me that I had reached my level of learning in math and I wouldn't be able to exceed any further and wouldn't help me. Now, by the way, we all have these stories. 
you know, I, I was just pulling apart with somebody else, you know, something around the same thing, middle school, high school, like these things happen. And I do ask the question, who's voice in your head? We'll come back to in a second. Your math teacher from when you were what, 16, 17 at the time? I was 18 at the time. 18. Yeah. Now holding you back a bunch of years later, completely unrelated. It made it really hard. Like even to this day, it's, I've definitely gotten a lot better in the past year, but I get nervous to do math in front of clients. And I don't think that they realize that necessarily, but it, I can do the math. I just need to take the time to do it. And it makes me very nervous to do it in front of clients. If I'm not in front of clients, I can do it easily. When I'm put on the spot like that, it's just nerve wracking for me because of that teacher years ago. And I'm going to call her Mrs. Smith. That's not her real name, but you actually, you actually knew her name too, but we're not going to call it out in the middle of the podcast. Yeah. But Mrs. Smith made an offhand comment that set you back for years. Mm -hmm. That's the head trash. We all have this. So let me kind of work this through. So child-free folks, we decide to leave the standard life plan, life script and go on our own. But then we still have the head trash that says you must let me give you a common one for child-free folks. If you don't have kids, you have to have a high-end career. No, you don't. But that's head trash. And that's stuff that people have put into our head, whether it's culture, religion, family, other things that are saying you must. And by the way, you don't. It's up to you if you want to go up the ladder, start your own business or whatever, or whatever brings you joy. You know, another example of this is people go, okay. I have money now. I'm doing okay. Is it okay if I don't make as much money? You know, switch jobs or whatever. And I go, sure, you're fine. Like, well, but how do I explain that to my family? I'm like, you don't. There's none of their business. But the head trash is, I've got to explain that to my family. Because mm-hmm. somebody always is owed an explanation, according to our brains. The people that are in the fire community, they'll say, oh, okay, I retired early. What do I tell people I do? Nothing. They're like, well, but you, when you introduce yourself, say, hi, I'm Jay. I'm a, a certified financial planner. I'm a child flow specialist. And they go, no, no, you can just say you're in finance. I don't care. You're managing your own portfolio. Like <laughs> you can say whatever you want. You know, you do not have to live your life for other people. The problem with head trash is we're not aware of where it comes from. So I gave Bree the tool and, and I use it often. I've asked the question. Whose voice is in your head? And usually what happens when I ask that question, they go, well, well, mine. And I'm like, no, let's try again. Where did you get that idea? Where did you get that thought? So a great example for my book, I had somebody call apart real well. said, look, I thought I could never live life without kids because I thought the only reason we exist on this earth is to have kids and a family. Now we'll have a separate discussion about you can have a family without kids and all that, but like that's the head trash. And I said, well, who's voice in your head? And when we pulled it apart and the answer was church. Every mm-hmm. sermon was, here's how you be a good father. Here's how you be a good mother. Here's a, you know, here's your, your goals. You don't realize how much that gets into your head. Yeah. It's in everything and very hard to separate that. And I think the challenge is, I don't know. And let's let Bree fight me on this one if she wants. I don't know if you can get rid of your own head trash without some help. I think you need to be called out on it. Because if somebody doesn't really say something to you, then you just kind of avoid it. Like I avoided it for years. And when you asked me that, I hadn't even started. I was just still considering it and was like, well, I don't know if I'll do this. Maybe, maybe not. And I probably would never have been here if you hadn't asked me that. But it sucked. I did not like it when you asked that. I was like, this really sucks. I was like, I've been talking to this guy like twice. And this is what he asks me. Like, now I just get a little cranky when people point out my raw spots. I wasn't too happy. But also, it was very helpful. You ever wonder why I don't get invited to dinner (laughs) parties? Because I'll ask those questions. Okay, I don't care. (laughs) I'm not talking about the weather or sports. I'm going to ask you, who's voice in your head telling you got to do that? And the fun part is, we hold on to this head trash like... It's gold and like, it's our excuse for everything. And as soon as somebody pokes at it and like, it falls apart, you're like, well, what do I do now? A common one we'll hear from our clients. So we'll run through this whole thing and 
we'll, we'll look at their finances. They're in a good place. And it takes a while to we'll figure out all that. They'll, they'll ask all the questions. And I'm like, all right, you can do anything you want. And they're like, well, no, I can't. Why? Well, because, and we'll go through the list and that's all head trash. We'll get rid of the head trash. And then they'll go, but what do I do next? I have no clue. And that's one of the challenges. If you actually get rid of your head trash, then what happens? It's hard. And like, we can't answer that next step for you. That's something you have to answer. But even allowing yourself to get to the point where you start thinking about an answer to that question can be scary because it's comforting to not have to face that head trash. And by the way, the truth is most people actually know the head trash they have to get rid of. They may or may not want to get called out on it, as Bree just pointed out. Bree, Bree's got the unfortunate thing. She works with me all the time. And if you work with me all the time, I just call things out. We do feedback all day long, good, bad, and ugly. We actually literally, after every meeting, what worked, what didn't, what would you do differently? And we're pulling apart head trash all day long. It is tiring. Oh, yeah. I have never been more exhausted than I have been in these past past year. Like, absolutely exhausted. Okay. Let me ask you, though. Have you ever grown this much in a year? No. That's the problem. You got to do like both. You have to be willing to kind of lean into the discomfort and go through your head trash to make it work there. That is very true. So let me give you some of my head trash because, you know, I can't just sell out Breeze. When I started Child Free Wealth, I had a plan. My plan was to go find about 50 clients, sit down and just me and those clients make a bunch of money and call that my firm. Well, that would make good money. It's fine. We're now at a point where I can't take on any more clients, but we're now debating, well, how many clients can we handle? Should we grow? To what level? Why should we do it? And, and part of it is there's such a huge need out there for child-free financial planning. I get drawn to it and like, all right, we got to do more. We got to help more people. We got to help more people. But I still in the back of my head like, well, you know, it'd be fine to just settle back at 50 clients and make my own money and be happy with it. And it's a self-limiting belief of like, well, how big can it get? And how big should it get? And how many staff should we bring on and all that? And I don't have the answer. And I'll ask questions, you know. So we got different people on the team and I'll ask the questions and I'm like, all right, what are we doing? And well, the other day I was having a conversation like, well, why set a limit? Why set a number? And I'm like, that I can't do that. I can't, so I'm a planner by nature, okay? Like literally it's in my job title. It's in what I do. Like how do you create a business and don't set a maximum number of clients or a minimum or, you know, how big and how many staff? And, and I'm like, well, I don't know. Each of those is a growth opportunity and it's head trash that I have to get past in order for the business to grow, in order for me to grow, in order to work through it. And I'm working on it. But it's not perfect. Have you seen it, Bray? Oh, yeah. You were uh, kind of freaking out a little bit after that. It was it was in a meeting and afterwards we were talking and you were like, well, now it's not enough. This isn't enough. Okay. So let me actually give you the numbers. So I said, all right, I was going to start with 50 people. And then I'm like, all right, we can help a thousand people over the next 10 years. That's a good goal. And then Bree was like, we could, we could do more than that. So like I wrote up, I actually have a plan. It's called the crazy numbers and it's 5,000 people to help. Well, the reality check is 5,000 people out of, I don't know, 50 million child free folks in the United States or whatever, it's somewhere close to that is 0. 0.0 like something like it's nobody. Mm -hmm. The head trash is, well, what if I build a company and nobody comes into it? Or what if, you know, I don't know, something goes sideways, something goes wrong. Things will go wrong. You're running a business, things will go wrong. But all of that head trash holds you back. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you my head trash. Bree is showing you her head trash because we think the way to make it accessible is with finance, we say three things, humor, humility, and vulnerability. We're literally on a podcast sharing our stuff. Now, I'm not saying you should get on a podcast and share your stuff. That's not what I'm saying. But like, <laughs> yeah, you know, people go, well, should I get help? Good question. And I always say there's three people who can help you. You need someone to look back, someone to look up, and somebody to look forward. The looking back, often for many people, has therapy and some other things, and that's not perfect, but just you got to look where you came from and how does that impact you. The looking up is more kind of like the big picture, whether it's spiritual for you, religious, I don't care, but like, why are you here on this earth? What are you here to do? Like the big stuff. And then the coaching is kind of like that pushing forward, that kick in the butt of like, 
I need to move forward. And your head trash, by the way, is in the dead center of those three. Because it's holding you back, you're missing the big picture, and it's from your past. So which person do you need to help you with it? I have no clue. The one you want to work with is not the one you need. If you like looking back, you need somebody to look forward. If you like looking forward, you need somebody to look back. And you also need people that you trust enough to lean into your life and say, Bree, you're not 18 anymore and you can do math. Yeah, that person to call you on your bullshit. I, I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. Well, it's true. <laughs> By the way, your spouse is very rarely going to be the answer on this. Neither of your parents. Yeah, because you're not going to listen to them. Even if or not hear them the same way. Yeah. And by the way, they may be the source of that head trash too. As I start pulling apart my life and, you know, uh, we moved for my wife's job, 1,200 miles. And people were like, what? You're moving your wife's job? I'm like, yeah, sure. Well, that's head trash. But like the guy does not move for the wife, which is bullshit. Okay. We're using the word bullshit. That, that one really is. You know, like that's going to be the head trash. I moved out of my small town to go to New York City when I was, you know, 19-ish. My father still thinks I'm crazy for it. You know, that's head trash. That holds you back. One of the ones that's disguised head trash. So my family uh, didn't have a lot of money coming up, but they always said, whatever you are, be the best at. I've now identified that that is a problem. That's a head trash for me because I can't just settle for good enough. One of the things Bree has been good at checking me on is like, look, you, you talk about work-life balance. You need it too. Right, yeah. Bree? I do say that to you quite often. Yes. And, and then I go, yeah, but there's people that need help. Yeah, but you also need a life too. Yeah, life is overrated. No, I'm joking. <laughs> like, no, oh we, we just, just in transparency, we re work really hard to make sure we are living the principles that we talk about with our clients on the podcast, other things. My head trash of got to be the best at it is stopping me from finding that file lifestyle and finding the balance. Mm -hmm. By the way, also, if you want no balance, start your own company. Because when you're running your own company, like, you know, until you have enough staff, you're everything. Um, you know, I actually have stopped taking on new clients and now Bree is taking on all new clients because that allowed me to work on the business. Mm -hmm. Well, but I still have to mentor Bree and Rob. I still have to teach them. Have give them feedback on their clients. We need to work throughout this. My work's gotten harder with more people, not easier. And it will for a bit. And I said to Bree, I said, okay, give me, what did I say, a year or two, and then, I, then I'll cut back on my clients further. Like, Yeah. Yes. We had to go through a whole thing. And I was like, do you really need more clients right now? No. Yeah. And she's right, of course. And, and what I've said to my clients, as long as they stick with me as a client, I'll stick with them. And that's just my commitment but I'm not taking on new clients. You know, it's just, it's the way to do it. And what, and part of that is because I've had other colleagues give me feedback and say that if you want to grow your company, the first thing you need to do is make time to actually work on the company. Mm -hmm. Now, the hard part is if you're a certified financial planner, you're a planner and that's been your job. And now you're not doing planning. It's head trash. You're planning for the business. You're planning in different ways. I'm with you, but this is the problem. Like, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. And we have to find a way to work around it. Yeah. It's difficult and it takes time. And since we're talking, to, you know, and by the way, child-free folks, this is when I see people falling back to the standard life plan, even though they've left it in other areas. Like, you need to buy a house. That's head trash. Buying a house is a choice. Well, you need to live. No, you don't. You can live wherever you want. You know, well, I need to, like, anytime you say you must or you need to, there's probably some head trash there. Mm -hmm. I want to, I'd like to, I'd love to is a different thing. They're very different. So let me pull another head trash for you. We have this moment, I love this moment with clients, where I add up everything they own, subtract everything they owe, and figure out their net worth. Now, by the way, net worth does not equal self-worth. That's a separate discussion. But I love when I can go and add it all up and go, blah, blah, blah. okay, so you're a millionaire. And they go, well, what, what, no, I've never thought of it that way. Like, 
Or they'll say like, well, but that counts my house. I'm like, no, that still counts. And their head will kind of explode because their mental model, their way of thinking, their head trash is still, I'm in rent and ramen. I'm barely making ends meet because they struggled for so many years. Making a shift from, hey, you've been barely making ends meet to you're a millionaire is hard. Now, in the head trash, there was a recent study, I looked at this, they looked at millionaires in the US and they said, what percentage of millionaires consider themselves wealthy? And it was something like 8%, like nobody. Yeah, very small number. It's head trash again. Mm-hmm. I mean, Brie, you've seen this moment when we tell the clients and, and, the, and like they just cannot believe or cannot like get around it. What, what's your experience, Ben? It's always fun to see because people are, they tend to be shocked. They're usually like, oh my, I, I didn't know that. Or that's better than I thought. And if you're not taking the time to actually look at the, that number, then of course you're not going to know. And it's going to be a surprise. And that's helpful to have and just see where you're at so you can make sure you're on the quote unquote right path to financial stability. And for some people, it's not going to be a million dollars too. Um, that doesn't automatically mean financial stability. Just numbers are different for everybody, but that's one example. Well, and, and let's pull that apart. What they'll say is I will be financially secure if, and it's either like I hit certain salary or a certain net worth or a certain number. I call them magic numbers. You know what happens every time they hit the magic number? They move it. Yep. It's further down the line. Because your mindset around money is the bigger issue than the actual dollars. Now, by the way, if you're struggling, you barely make ends meet, you're truly in rent and ramen, that's a different world. But once you're out of that, we're talking about financial independence. We're talking about living the life you want to live. It's these barriers. So I had somebody the other day, and I, anyone that's listening knows I hate social media, but I am on Facebook. <laughs> And they sent me a message, a very nice one. And, and they, they had listened to the podcast, actually uh, the one I'd done on the Dinky Pod. And they're like, it completely changed my mindset around money. I'm like, cool. So what you just did was flush the head trash. Like, for example, I need to save for retirement. I need to pass on money to the next generation. Those are options. Those are not requirements. And what happens is sometimes you can listen to folks and get it. Sometimes you need people to poke at you. I'm probably, I probably poke a little too hard. I did poke at Brie well before it was okay. <laughs> you know, we, we talk about creating a psychologically safe environment so that you can do that poke and say, hey, let's get out of this. And I actually will intentionally like spread out how often I push at people's head trash. Like that one's done. Let's get, let it sit for a little while and come back to another one mm -hmm. because each level gets deeper. There's actually a tool called the five whys. And if you've ever hung out with kids and seen them ask why, 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 it actually works. You know, essentially what I did with Bria, I said, okay, you know, I have, she said something about tests and math. Why do you have trouble with that? Well, I've always had trouble. Why have you always had trouble? Well, I've I had trouble in high school. Well, why? Well, this teacher. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, oh, so Mrs. Smith is running your life many years later. Yeah. That's the pulling apart. That It's kind of hard to do yourself. It's very hard to do because it's more comforting to ignore it. I'll give you another example of this. We're going to have on another podcast, Bree and her wife, and we were going through different things. And I said, okay, I'm going to give you both a book assignment, the gap and the gain. And really this book looks at, are we looking at what we gained or are we looking at like, oh, we missed it? Or like, you know, and people, we, we all do this. Yeah, I made a million dollars, but it took me five years longer than I thought. And I'm like, who cares? It's not a race. But I gave Brie this book to read and her and her wife an assignment. And you had a love-hate relationship with it. Is that fair? Yeah, I was pissed at you at first. <laughs> Why? Because I did not want the to be poked like that. Book poked me. And then I was like, well, I guess. Okay. I The biggest part was because. I have dealt with a lot of trauma in life, like a lot of mental illness in my past, just PTSD, depression, anxiety, eating disorder, all of that. I'm like, I'm at a point where I'm genuinely happy with my life and enjoying things. And I'm like, 
my Instagram bio even says just happy to be here because I just am very happy with life now. And I'm like, you know what? I already look at my gain. Like I'm fine. And then as I was reading it, I'm like, God damn it. Like maybe, maybe not so much. <laughs> okay. So she comes back to me. She's like, at first it's like positive psychology, habit, which I don't like, which by the way, I get it. You know, like there's a whole, that there's a whole like thing around that. I'm like, that's not what it is. It's a mindset shift. It is getting rid of that head trash that says, I'm not good enough, or I need to do this, or I need to prove this other person, or I need to, you know, a lot of people with money go, but I'm running behind. I'm like, behind who? You're behind your head trash, behind the voices, behind all that. And by the way, you you, you miss it. Brie, like, she's like halfway through the book. She's like, I kind of hate this book. And I'm like, <laughs> in my head, I'm going, I picked the right one. I picked the right book. <laughs> like, that's like... It's leaning into that discomfort just a little to move mm -hmm. through. Is that fair? Oh, it's definitely fair. Yeah. It and is and by the way, I heard you and your wife are now like using those terms and looking at the gap and gain in life. Oh, yes. I received an entire monologue about what she learned from the gap and the gain the other day. <laughs> so what that is, is that tells me you got past the head trash. We're going to dive a little deeper into Brie because she doesn't know this is coming. So, you know, if she yells at me, we all know why. But here's the thing. Your head trash was actually limiting your growth because you're like, I've already been through trauma. I've already done a lot of work. I've already, I'm good. That's a head trash. It's a self-limiting belief. Yeah. And I think there are things that you don't realize get poked until they do get poked because I had that in the past. Like I was like, I worked through things. I got poked again, found a, something life flight helicopters I ended up living by a hospital I never knew those are a very big trigger for me worked through that and I was like you know what I've done this it's all right I'm fine I'm good and then just I spend all day with you and I get poked and prodded more <laughs> by the way I do not suggest you spend all day with me and get poked and prodded like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like literally it's a requirement if you're going to work for for our company that like you've got to be willing to grow because we're trying to help our clients grow. So we have to grow. Like after every meeting, I'm doing the same thing. I'm holding myself to the same standard. I'm beating myself up, but I'm trying to look at the game and trying to find that balance. And, and once you start seeing it, there's actually a term it's called metacognition. It's thinking about how you think you can be aware of it. So for example, I've had to do, do a lot of work and I will like get this like gut kind of anxiety, almost an anxiety attack growing. And I'll stop and go, when did that start? And I will pull apart what set me off. And by the way, it's usually something dumb. Like I'll get a random email from somebody, you know, like, you know, we get people that don't want to work with us. And like, you know, I don't want to work with you essentially. And I'm like, oh, why? What did I do wrong? What did I miss? What? And you start like, and like an hour later, you're in a funk and you're like, what happened? And I, you know, you got to pull that apart. That's all head trash. If I don't address it, the next day it's going to still be there. Mm -hmm. Or now it's going to be part of my confidence is shot or other things. And with money, it happens all the time. I will tell you, I, I sold my house and renting. And the thing I didn't realize was how much of my brain was going towards maintaining the house and taking care of it and all that. And I actually enjoy some of it. But I realize I have a whole lot more space to do other stuff. Because if the toilet runs, I call the people here. Now, by the way, this place has been a month trying to get this one toilet fixed. But like, you know, like there's still this own issue. It also made space and money because I don't have to run to Home Depot to buy a part. And I don't have to do it. And I don't have to call the plumber. And, to... and you start realizing, you know, when I told myself I enjoy taking care of houses and rebuilding things, that might have been trash. That might yeah. have been me just understanding, you know, I always tell my wife, you know, she always romanticizes the last house we were living in and she's going to listen to this and yell at me, but that's okay. But like, she always like loves the last house more than the next one. And I'm like, you loved it because I fixed it and did all the work and got it to the place that you want. This new one, we haven't done that yet. You know, made it into ours and you realize, oh yeah, that's right. You know, and, and I just think we just keep telling ourselves stories. That's true. You have not once been 
upset about something with your house since you moved, actually, now that you say that. Because there was frequent times before that you were. Yeah. Like, I had to mow 30 acres, okay? It sucks. Like, I, you know, random things broke and, th- like, just random things happen that you don't have to deal with. But the, but the head trash says, I, have, I must own a home. Yeah. It, it, I don't know. Here's your homework. If you're listening to this, you probably know the things you need to talk about and think about. Find one. Find one self-limiting belief. Find one head trash, whatever you want to call it. And ask yourself, whose voice am I hearing? Who put that in my head? Now, by the way, if you say you, you got to go deeper because you've now internalized. Who told me I must? Where did I get that from? Was it family? Was it culture? Was it uh, religion? Was it individuals, friends, whatever? When you identify it, it will allow you to get past it. If you don't, you've made it part of you. And this is the old, you're letting somebody live in your head rent free. You don't want to be doing that. That, you know, there's a, there's a book, Dr. Henry Cloud talks about necessary endings. And at some point, you need to stop letting Mrs. Smith mess up your math. Now, by the way, it's going to take a few years for Bree to work through that and be perfect and be cool doing math in front of clients. By the way, I've seen her do math. She does fine. Not an issue. Does well on most things. She can do all of the financial math. But you know what? Mrs. Smith is still in her head. I hope it's not actually Mrs. Smith, but I made up that name. But It's not. <laughs> You're good. The whole point is you need to start doing that work. If you can't do it yourself, find somebody to look back, up or forward. I don't know which one you need, but you do. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a rating or review. We'd love to keep the conversation going. Follow Child Free Wealth on social media or email us at podcast at childfreewealth.com. If you're interested in working together, learn more by visiting our website, www.childfreewealth.com. We'll see you next time.